So what was the hardest part, you're asking? Probably the, probably the, this railing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's looking better. Becoming an this was crazy. This thing came in like this spool, like probably only to hair on my waist. It was like this. And we bent it the wrong way the first time. That seems like definitely more right. Yeah, this is not great. Right. got quite a this angle on. This too fine. Yeah. Oh, this wow, looks super cool. angled now. So we had to bend it back and do it the right way. So that I would say the railing, the top rail was the hardest part. This system is made by Paragon Stairs. We actually uh, were told by them that we were the first contractor for this year to order actual deck boards. You can see we like actually matched the deck boards from here. It wasn't easy, but I'll tell you later how we did it. Uh, Cause typically the system comes with just, you know, pre-made treads for each one. So when you have the individuals like this, it made it a little harder. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about just super simple, five, six steps on how to build a set of stairs like this. Even if it's not on a deck, it could be on an interior of a home. Maybe you're going up to a taller area and you have very tight space. Spiral stairs are perfect because this thing, this entire imprint is only about 60 inches wide. So um, first things first is you actually want to get your center column in. So your center column has a base plate that's just by itself. And then as you can imagine, this column goes in. And when you order a set of stairs like this, you're going to get a set of instructions. But the reason I'm doing this video is just to make it easier for you and give you kind of the spark notes version so as i said without hitting my head here uh we started with this base plate here and then it comes with this tall column now the column was like a, an aluminum look you can see here i've got sections of stair tread so the way these treads come from paragon which I, again i think is a great system i'm not promoting them we're not paid by them in any way but they just stack on each other and then you kind of bring it around and then it comes with these little set screws if you look here you can see there's some set screws that when you're done with everything, that's where, how you set these in. They just kind of dig right into the aluminum. Um, they're self-supporting, so like all of these stack together and there's no slop or anything like that. One bit of advice I'll give for whoever's doing a system like this is don't mount this bottom until you actually got this top here, this landing level. There you go. Wow. We found that out uh, the easy way. Sometimes I say it's the hard way, but we actually did it the right way this time without having to take it apart. But we mounted this first and then plumbed this both ways and then set our base. You'll see in the video that we actually have like these masonry anchors that we bought. Paragon will give you some lags, but they do not give you masonry anchors. So if you're gonna do something like this, make sure you pick some up. We bought 3-8 structural lags that are masonry application style. So uh, coming around here, Pretty much the next steps from there, once you've got this set up, is uncoiling this railing. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this really was the hardest part. Yeah. You I'm might be able to. There. Yeah. Do you want to flip that, guys? Or. So when you're reading the instructions, just you can either bend it one way or the other. So you're going to want to make sure you follow that the way this is going to run, because traditionally these are supposed to come down this way. But the way they did this drawing for us, they actually did an architectural drawing. We have this post here. So we had to actually run it the opposite of a standard run. So I bent it out backwards and then we had to bend it back in. So the next step in the process is pretty much putting your front balusters on. You can see there's like a nut and a bolt here connection. Um, they, they give you a little bit of a channel here to kind of make sure you don't have slop this way. And the, the angle on the railing is already pre-cut. So if you look up here, it's already got that angle on it. Um, it's going to self-tap and screw at the top. We did pre-drill them with a 1 8 bit just because when we were trying to do it without that, the screw was walking all over and we had some scratches that happened on the railing kit. So uh, that would be my best advice on that. And then from there is really your center balusters. These do get cut, but you don't cut them on the angle end. You're going to cut them down here on the bottom. They give you a little nut and bolt here as well with this. But the cool thing about these is say you cut your cut short, you've got this self tap and screw here that hits this and kind of gets this nice and tight. So your cuts don't have to be perfect on this. So you have permission to only measure once and cut once. <laughs> so that leads me to our last thing, the kind of the granddaddy of them all is the treads. Now, if you're gonna order a system like this from Paragon, you're gonna get typically for an interior application, just one piece of wood that could be a hardwood that, that just comes just like this and pre-cut. 
The challenge with this, with the decking, we really wanted to match the decking. So we had individual pieces. So we actually had to modify every one of these. We pre-drilled, screwed in from the underside here. And yeah, it, it came out awesome, but it was a lot more work, a lot more work than we imagined. You're gonna get a booklet when you get a system like this that goes through every single step, but it's essentially six major steps and we thought it was awesome. Um, it took us about 32, uh, person hours to build this thing, believe it or not, because we had to do a concrete form. Um, they actually recommended a uh, 18 by 18 form because this is aluminum, but you're gonna wanna check if you're doing something like steel, you're gonna have to do something bigger, but we did have to go four feet down for the frost line here in New England. So I'm Josh, I'm a general contractor here in Massachusetts. If you have any questions, just throw a like up here, throw something in the comment box. I'm happy to answer any of your comments. And you can also email me, josh at renovisaconstruction.com. Thanks.